Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Gold Gas here. This episode is about how to service a back boiler, the Baxi 401, and also we're going to be changing the thermocouple on there as well. If there's a particular video you want to see, then uh, just drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do. If you enjoy the video, please drop a like, subscribe, and if you push the post notification bell, you will see my videos as soon as they get posted. Don't forget to make a note of the temperature settings so you can set them back when you're finished. First, you're going to do a couple of screenshots of the service manual. You can pause this and have a little look further. It's not the best condition because it's quite old and it's probably been copied onto a PDF. And I came out to the back boiler the other day and the insulation panel was uh, broken and some of it was missing. So I had to cut it off temporarily until I got a new one. Um, also, the thermal couple kept cutting out and it looks a bit ropey, so we're going to change that as well. Check for your ventilation. Uh, there was a vent behind this radiator, um, so that's not allowed as we don't know what condition it is, it's blocked. Um, and also, the radiator itself is probably blocking it with a bit of dirt, we don't know what's behind there. So, they've installed another one in the kitchen. Uh, when you're doing it, try and feel a breeze through there. Um, sometimes people put cling film and newspaper in there uh, so it stops the draft so if you're in doubt I would take it off and physically feel or put something sharp through there see if you can poke it through make sure you check the manual to see how much ventilation you need before starting as well make sure you have an approved terminal on the flue or the chimney uh, just done a screenshot of the book just your gas book of some of the approved and non-approved ones On the fire, there's a little plate on the bottom that just pulls off, it's only held on by lugs. And then there's two screws holding the front cover on. And you want the gas isolated, and then you want to undo that inside nut. Ask the customer if the fire is working and the back boiler, make sure they're all working okay. Try it out, make sure it lights, and you know what you're dealing with. To get the fire front off, you undo that nut. And there's uh, some screws on a bracket holding the fire in place. Uh, so undo the ones that are attaching to the fire and then the whole thing will shimmy forward. Just to show you the gas is isolated from the gas meter. Give it a hoover up as you go, if it's quite dirty, don't want to make more mess because a load of dust on this one so we're just going to start hoovering and then just keep going as we start pulling bits apart. Here we go, ready to pull off to start pulling it forward and then we can have a look at the back boiler itself. Remove the cover on the front there and pull out the thermostat um, from the pocket. There's a little clamp that holds it on there. There's the data plate that show us our burner pressure we want and settings that it's been adjusted to. When you've done that, just undo the two nuts on the front there and then you'll get that front cover off for the combustion box. Here's the broken insulation panel, so that's at risk, so uh, got to cut it off, but I already cut it off and we're back today. Fit in a new one. There's a new one, and uh, we can have a look at the thermal couple as well, as I mentioned. Undo the three screws holding the burner in place, and then undo the nuts on the gas valve itself. Uh, get the pilot tube out, get the thermal couple out. Get the burner tube open and then you can take the whole burner out with the pilot assembly attached. Put on a nice dust sheet so none of them gets damaged and you don't 
any dust on the customer's carpet or floor. Pull the baffles out and then we can give this a clean with selection of brushes. Got a couple of brushes here. Um, give it a scrub back and forth, side to side. Um, use the bottle brush as well, a skinny one, but it's not uh, on the video. But just use any brushes that will fit. Obviously, nothing too sharp or hard. Um, in the manual, it gives you part numbers as well for brushes that are suitable for it that they recommend. Obviously, you're giving it more of a brush and a hoover than on the video. Just uh, a bit tedious and boring if I just show the whole thing. So keep brushing everything. Get the uh, mesh filter as well clean, the gauze one. Clean the burner, hoover. Spray all the tubes with uh, air duster. Spray the pilot assembly. Get everything nice and clear so there's no dust anywhere. And it could burn nice and good, nice and blue. Make sure you can see daylight through the pilot injector. Got our new thermocouple fitted and it's all ready to go back in place. Little shot of the uh, disc in the meter, just so the customer couldn't use the bat boiler. They weren't gonna use the fire anyway. Um, that was the only gas appliance they had, uh, those two. If they had a cooker or a hob, then I would have just cut it off from the appliance. Um, there is an isolation valve on the appliance as well, um, which you can use, sometimes a bit fiddly to get to, but uh, so I'll just use the meter. To ignite, hold down the gray button on the gas valve and push the black piezo igniter on the left hand side. Keep sparking till you get a flame lit. Uh, once you see the flame, hold on to the grey button and you can stop igniting. And you want to make sure that flame is touching the thermal couple. If it is, hold it for about 15 seconds and it should stay lit when you release the button. If not, try it again for a, a bit longer. Refer to the manual and it tells you all the time you should hold it for. Um, and then we're going to go on to adjusting the pilot. So if you need to adjust the pilot flame, again, refer to your manuals how big the flame needs to be um, and to, to cover the thermal couple itself. So uh, a little adjustment screw here on the gas valve on the left hand side and turn that left or right and that will go up and down. I'm going to check the joints we've disturbed so, uh, um, with the pilot lit otherwise it's not going to be live the pilot tube pipe so we want to use our leak detector but the brush type bit more precise and also you don't want to spray near the flame as it's highly flammable in the cans. Referring to the data plate here then we can see what burner pressure we need. Also I've done a screenshot of the manual and uh, so you'll be able to see all the different settings and you can plug it into the test nipple closest to the burner. Remember the other nipples for your gas inlet Make sure that's correct as well before before you start adjusting the burner pressure. I've uh, already gone through this in my previous video, so I'm not going to go into inlet pressures and working pressure. So once the burner lit, turn that up to max, put demand, 
and then we can adjust doesn't need much adjusting this one undo the cap on top of the gas valve there and then you can just clockwise and anti-clockwise and get that perfect setting be gentle and very slow and just make sure you do it right Just checking the other joints with the burner on to uh, spray any joints again you've disturbed. And then do the cap back up, set the settings back to how you had it. Now we're going to do a smoke test. So put it in where the flue is there, just above the boiler. Um, I've got a pellet here. Do a match first so you can see if it's actually going to pull and not blocked and fill the room up with smoke. I've already done that, fortunately, when I began the job. So I check again that sort of thing at the beginning, ventilation, flue, make sure the flue is clear. Otherwise, I need to get chimney swept or possibly new flue liner. Something like that, just have a look before you begin any major work. So I've got the smoke pellet ready to go. Nice red one, clearly seen. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to run outside and make sure it's coming out the right place. Look at that, puffing away. Need to check any rooms it goes through as well. Check the loft. If there's a flue liner, so it needs to be in one piece. Uh, to do a smoke pellet and then check the loft while it's going and any rooms it's going through. Uh, make sure there's no cracks in the brickwork or anything like that. Just so you know it's sealed. You're not going to get any nasty products of combustion leaking out. A couple of photos of the book again of spillage tests and stuff. If you'd have a look at if you want to pause it if you're interested. With the new thermocouple in place, I want to check the safety device to turn the gas valve off and listen out for the click. Um, I didn't get a video of that because the living room's quite noisy, so uh, you won't be able to hear the click anyway, but it has clicked and it was fine. Um, I think 60 seconds on these ones. Again, refer to your manual or your book. And uh, yeah, and then make sure the boiler and the fire light again after, and you're all good to go. I have put a smoke pellet, uh, smoke match rather, in the fire. Again, refer to your manual for servicing the fire. Um, I haven't gone into detail with that today. If you want to see anything else, then uh, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.